Hey guys, CJ here, and today I'm actually back from the long lack of recordings since whenever the last video was uploaded, and I would like to apologize for that. There were a few surgeries, they went well, and no one needs to know anything more. So, in this video, we're going to be discussing 1.11 Forge modding, which is fantastic. I mean, 1.11 is okay, and Forge modding for 1.11 is okay, but it's great that we're updating. So, I'm gonna actually do 1.11.2, so I will link you to this page right here. Now, you'll want to go to MDK. This does not matter whether you are using Windows or Mac. I'm going to save this into a modding folder. Uh, you can just save it like that. Extracting it resets the name, I've found. And once you've got that downloaded, if you don't already have Eclipse downloaded to edit with, I recommend you go ahead and download that. You can uh, find that at eclipse.org slash downloads. Once again, you can find the link in the description. Just click the download 64-bit button. And you can click download right there. And it'll download and you can set that up. But since I've already got it right here. I have no need to do so. So, now, our modding folder has this beautiful zip file as my cats run out the door chasing each other. And if we go ahead and unzip this, um, on Windows you can use WinRAR, on Mac just use Archive Utility, it's fine. And you can, uh, you can go ahead and delete that file, you don't need it. Now, the good stuff. I'm gonna rename this folder before we set it up. I've found uh, last uh, series 1.9 slash 1.10 modding that uh, it doesn't like it if you rename it or move it. So I'm gonna name this Modding Tuts because Tuts means tutorials. Now you can go ahead and delete all those txt files and uh, before we do anything else let's go ahead and open build.gradle. Now in here we can see this is where the forge version is. If you ever want to change this version you can to update it. And I am going to go right here because this is where basic information about the mod is stored. Now, what you're going to want to do uh, set the version to 1.0.0. You can leave the version at 1.0, but this is how it exports onto the file. Of course, you can rename it, but that's too difficult. Um, and then here. For your group, this is going to be the main package of your mod. So, for example, if my mod ID is tutorial, I'm going to make it like this. You can omit the mods, change the CJ Berkey, even change the com if you want. That doesn't matter. Next, um, I think we're done in this file. And this is also optional. You can put the uh, version like of Minecraft and then underscore and then the mod version. If you want, I'm going to do that to clarify it. In gradle.properties, I don't think we have to modify. Ooh, we can. This just adds a little more RAM. This adds 5 gigs. So it gives it a little more power when you're building or anything. Usually that's not needed. But I'm excessive. So what you're going to want to do is either go up to Spotlight search terminal. If you're on Mac, you want to do these two. If you're on Windows, you'll go down to the start button, and I believe you can right click and command prompt. That'll get you there. On Mac, you can search for uh, terminal. You can go into the utilities folder and open terminal. Finally, you can save terminal to your dock, and you can open it. Now I've got a different terminal that looks different, so I'll just open up the default terminal just so you can see what yours would look like. I mean, it, would, it wouldn't probably wouldn't look a lot like this because I, I have a theme on, but that's not important. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change the directory to this current folder. On Mac, if you click and hold on this icon in the Finder window, you can drag it into here and do that. Now on Windows, you can go back a folder. So this is the folder that everything is contained in. You can change directories, just like that. And Mac, you can do that too, clearly. Now, on Windows, what you would do is you'd run Gradle W, and then setup D, 
dcomp workspace. Now because I'm on Mac, in front of this Gradle W, I put a dot and a slash. Now this can take a good amount of time to run, so I will be back when it is finished. Okay guys, I'm back, it has finished, and we are not done yet. No, no, no. So, you'll want to run the same Gradle W command, but afterwards, put Eclipse instead of setup decomp workspace. Now this one takes a lot less time. Um, so if you aren't using Eclipse, there are a few other options. Uh, I don't actually have them pulled up right now, so I can't really tell you what they are. Apologies. But, I'm sure, yeah, quick Google will get you. I know, uh, IDEA or IntelliJ or whatever you uh, want to call it, and then NetBeans are supported. Okay, so, it has been set up, as you can see, and now, guess what we do? That's right, we open Eclipse. How did you know? Now, if it's your first time opening Eclipse, or if you have told Eclipse to do this at every launch, it's going to ask you where your workspace is. And for our mod, we want to be in the folder. I said we want to be in the folder. There's an Eclipse folder right here, and this is the folder you want to open. This contains the workspace. There we go. All right, so now we can just browse and see if this is unchecked it will ask you every time which I like and why is the window size so weird you know what don't care so on the desktop once again if this would work that would be nice on thy desktop oh it's just not accepting a click there we go that was weird. So, we uh, can either select the Eclipse folder or open it and then hit open if you want to be safe. And then you click OK. Now, if your, uh, your uh, Eclipse has not been set to ask that every time, you could go up to the top into the File menu and switch Workspace. And then you go over to the side, then there's like an Other button or Select Another, something of that nature. You know, the basics. First things first, I'm just going to customize my workspace a little bit because I despise the way the default workspace works, or looks. So you want to go to Window, Perspective, Open Perspective, and Java. Now this Eclipse error reporting, I'm going to go ahead and enable that. I'm going to make sure to blur out my email. Enable. And you want to send. You don't have to do that, that's optional, that's just if you have an error in Eclipse itself, it sends it to the developers so they know and you know they can fix it up and such. Now I'm going to use a theme called Clean Sheet. It's available in the Eclipse Marketplace and I'm also going to change my font a little bit to make it a little more legible for you guys. Let's set it to 15 point just so you can see it because that's always nice. Now Forge usually ships with a default mod and this is what I have to say to your default mod, Forge. How does that feel? You'll notice there is also a resources folder. This is where your mcmod.info file is. And you know, if this could actually open an Eclipse, that would be fantastic. So if you open preferences, go to file associations. You can add .info, not .inf, .info. You can move .inf if you accidentally did that. And I'm gonna say text editor, dun, 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 dun. and I'm also gonna go back to uh, general appearances, colors, and fonts, and I'm going to say basic uh, text font. Oh dear, I'm gonna set that to 15, not 100. When you click OK, this can take a few seconds to load because it's got to go through all the files and set up the default text editor for their uh, extension. So we can open this now. And there we go, this is the font we'll see. Now, if you recall, our mod ID was tutorial, name, tutorial mod's fine with me, example, tutorial mod, as the description, give the forge people some credit, 
This logo file does not exist yet. We will make it exist. Why don't you go ahead and put your name right there? That's fantastic. And URL is usually where you can find the mod, but I'm going to put a shameless plug to my website because my mod's not there. So that's about it for the mcmod.info file, which is great. Now if you'll remember, in the, uh, the build.gradle file, we said this is going to be our package. So I'm just going to copy that, create a new package in source, Java, and boom, that's our package now. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new class. We're going to call this tutorial mod. Why? Because we can, and you can't stop me. So, what do we do from here? Well, this is, this is quite simple. You'll like this. We're going to create another class. We're going to call it mod info. Once again, because we can. Now, inside this class, we will store the basic information about the mod, such as the name, which can be found here, the mod ID, which can be found here, and the version, which can be found not there, right here. Now what I'm actually going to do, now I'll keep that, I'll keep that, it's cool, it's cool. I'm going to say mod info. Let's see. Now we're going to make these public static final so they can be accessed from any class anywhere without being changeable. And we're going to make them a string because they're a string of letters. That's what strings are. And I'm going to call this one name in all caps because it's static and final. Name of the mod was tutorial mod. Now let's see, what was our mod ID? Our mod ID was simply tutorial. Finally, our version was 1.0.0. Okay, that's enough for the mod info file right now. We'll set up more in the next ip suite. So, up above the class declaration, we're going to add an annotation, which looks like this. This basically tells Forge, when it goes searching through your class path to find mods, hey, this class is a mod. You should load me. Now we're going to set name equal to, guess what, mod info dot name. Wow, isn't this fantastic? We're going to set mod ID to mod info dot mod ID. And finally, equals version. Now the reason we have a separate class to do this thing is because if you don't, you end up with a slight issue. And that issue is, if you change anything in this file, you're going to have to change it everywhere else. And nobody likes to do that. And that's it's not what you're supposed to do, because nobody likes to do that. So, this is about as far as I'm going to go in this episode, guys. Thank you for watching, and if you want to see the next episode, go ahead and leave a like, and if you enjoy my content, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.